All right, guys, so we're out here in the lab, and I've got my personal car here, my 96 Buick Roadmaster, and I'm just going to show you guys how to scan for codes using our Solus Edge right here that we've been working on in class or online, uh, whichever method uh, that you've been doing it with. So uh, first off, obviously the scan tool right here, this is, like I said, our, our Solus Edge. I've got our cable, our diagnostic cable hooked to the top port of our edge right here. It pushes in, and then you've got two screws right here that you can screw this in and make sure that it's not going to pull out of our, of our scan tool. You do not necessarily need power right here in the top. You don't need a power cable because... A, there's a battery inside of here, and it should be charged up already. If it's not, the nice thing about this is this runs off of battery power from the vehicle. So as soon as we plug our diagnostic cable into our OBD2 diagnostic port, then this scan tool should automatically power up. So this car, our diagnostic port, and I know you cannot see it, but it's going to be up here under our dash right here in this area. This is a very common place to have it. Um, otherwise, it's going to be anywhere in the driver's footwell, usually, usually up under the dash. It could be up under this side. A lot of cars seem to have it up under this corner. You might have to put your head under the dash. You might have to lay on the floorboard or, or get down on your hands and knees and, and look at the up under the dash to see if the uh, diagnostic port's there. But that's about the area that it should be in. So our cable right here, we're just going to take the end, look at the shape. It only plugs in one way. So if you're trying to jam it into the diagnostic port one way and it's not going, flip it over and try that way. Some cars are upside down. Normally the longer spot right here is normally the top. The shorter row right here is usually the bottom. Again, depends on the car. As we plug this in, you'll see the green light or green glow down here. There is an LED here on our cable that will light up to show us that our cable has power, that our diagnostic port has power. If for whatever reason that light does not light up, your scan tool does not auto power on, try starting the car. If nothing happens as far as light or power up on the scan tool with the car running, you might have an issue with the actual port itself getting power. That's usually a fuse or some sort of wiring issue that you potentially could have with this and make sure that you uh, double check. Fuses, relays, etc., etc. So we're going to take this, we're going to plug this into our diagnostic port down here. And you see as I plug this in, Bam, I've got a green glow right here, and my scan tool just turned on. So here's my scan tool auto-powered up. That means good things are happening. I don't have any blown fuses. I don't have any relays or anything that are bad. I don't have to power up the car and, and hope that this works. Okay, so now my scan tool's powered up. You see I've got my different touchscreen displays here that I can go into car you need to have the car the ignition on or the vehicle running to go any further than this because our computer in our car is not powered on with the key off so we have to either turn the key to full run like the key would be if the car was running or we can actually start the vehicle so that depends on what we need to do, what we want to do with this car. So for this test, I'm just basically going to take my key and I'm going to turn it to full run. So you see with run, your check engine light should illuminate and it might stay on. Most cars, it does stay on. It might come on, go off, then come back on. You see being a GM, it also says check gauges right here because I've got no oil pressure or anything. Car's not running. So... You know, you might get the, something like that lit up. Don't worry about that. We're just worried about our ignition is now on in the run. Okay, so to check codes for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the scanner option right here, which if I touch this, that'll take me to this screen right here. I can go in and select 
what I'm working on, okay, what make, model, etc. Then I can scroll down. I can use the the touch pad right here and scroll down, scroll over, or again being touch screen, I can just simply touch Buick right here. Loading database, it'll take a second or two. And now it's going to ask me, do I want to do an automatic ID or a manual ID? I can do either, okay? Some cars support the first function, the automatic ID. Some cars do not. Most of the new, new ones within the last couple of years do support automatic ID. Otherwise, manual ID, and you'd basically go in, put year, make, model, it's going to ask for engine size, transmission, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, most of these do support automatic ID. So I'm going to hit the automatic ID button right here. And it should read. It's going to communicate with the computer. And then it's going to tell me exactly what this is. And you see it even knows my VIN number, my vehicle identification number right here. Tells me my VIN, tells me 1996 Buick Roadmaster, tells me the engine size, 5.7 liter V8, and I can hit OK or I can hit Cancel. So I only want to hit Cancel if this is for whatever reason is wrong. Okay, but the fact that it's correct, I can touch OK. And now it's going to give me my diagnostic menu. So I can diagnose the engine, transmission, anti-lock brakes, airbag, oil specs and resets. That's how to reset my oil light. I go into tire and wheel service or service interval reset. Okay, so these are the functions that this scan tool is giving me. Okay, well, if I want to check uh, vehicle fault codes, engine fault codes, I would go to engine. So I can go up and hit yes right here in the upper right corner, or I can touch this. I prefer using over here just because for me it's easier to just use my thumb and scroll through and yes or no. Yes confirms, no means no, or no backs out of this menu back to the previous menu. So I'm here in engine, I'm just gonna hit yes. And then right here I have codes menu that I can look at. I can look at data display, functional tests, generic functions or troubleshooter. I'm just gonna to go to codes menu right here. Just gonna see if there's any codes stored. And then you see right here it says display codes. That's how I'm gonna see what fault codes are in there. Clear codes is going to erase those fault codes. You don't wanna do that yet until you've read them. Freeze frame, frame failure records. This is the, the freeze frame data that was stored when that fault code was set, or there we have DTC status. Is our check engine light supposed to be on or is it off? Okay, so I'm gonna start right here in display codes. This will then communicate, and then all powertrain codes is gonna be my first option. History codes, failed this ignition, mill or SVS or message requested, last test failed, test failed since closed since code cleared. So all fault codes are all powertrain codes. This is going to show me everything. This is going to show me engine, transmission, ABS, etc. codes. History codes are codes that may be still in memory. The nice thing about OBD2 is it automatically resets. It automatically turns off the check engine light after a certain number that it does not see that fault again. So if you're driving along and you've had a check engine light for on for a while and then all of a sudden it goes off, it's not that the car automatically fixed itself, it's just that the ECU did not see that fault happening within a certain number of attempts, so it turned the check engine light off. It still remembers, it still knows, that's what this history codes is there for. Failed this ignition means the time that the ignition was on for this car, the last run cycle of this vehicle, that's what failed this ignition means. So if I want to see what fault codes were set with just this drive cycle, that's what failed this ignition means. Message requested right here means, is the check engine light ordered to be on, ordered to be off? Last test failed, what emissions test failed, if any, and test failed since codes cleared. Okay, so 
you want to start with right here, all powertrain codes. So I'm going to click yes, and then bam, here's going to be all of our fault codes right here. So you see my first one, and it, it's kind of bright right here. O2 heater circuit, bank 2, sensor 2. I have a fault code or potential fault code for that. I have an engine misfire detected right here, secondary air system, and an oil life generator, okay? So this is probably means I'm getting a lazy or a potentially failed after cat, post cat oxygen sensor right here. And you see if I scroll up, I can select common replace parts based on 164 repairs. If I wanted to see that, I could hit yes. I don't necessarily want to see that, but there's my fault codes right here. P0161 is the first one. O2 heater circuit, bank two, sensor two. Looks like I need to get an oxygen sensor. Engine misfire detected. Secondary air injection system right here, P0410, and then an oil life generator lamp, which basically is the light that turns on to tell me that my oil needs changed. This car has had that issue of it doesn't want to tell me that my oil needs changed. Hey, I'm not complaining because I know when I change my oil. I, I keep track of that. Secondary air injection system is... An emissions-related device, it is an air pump that injects air before the catalytic converters to heat the catalytic converters up sooner. Engine misfire detected, it's not giving me a specific cylinder, just means at one point there was an engine misfire detected. And then the top one, the O2 heater circuit bank 2 sensor 2, that's telling me that I potentially have a bad um, oxygen sensor. Again, this is not a here's what to replace list. This is a direction. Go north to fix this. Go east to fix this. Here's something to start looking at data-wise. Okay, So that's what this is. This is not a replace oxygen sensor. Not a replace secondary air injection system. Not a replace engine misfire. Okay, This is a suggestion of here's where to start looking. Okay, so remember that. But here's the codes that this car sees. And now we can go into looking at data, diagnosing. We know which direction to go. and We've got sort of a map. We know we need to drive from Atlanta to Athens now is what our code reader right here is saying, what our scan tool is saying. How do we get there? We still don't know yet. We still don't know that specific address. But you know what direction we need to go and what town we're going to end up in, okay? The rest of it is up to you. So, again, this is these are the codes stored. Now, to get out of here, if I wanted to go back, I could hit the no button. Or I could hit the home or the back button right here. The home takes us back to the main screen. You don't really want to hit it unless you want to go back to the main screen. The back button right here is how we would get back out. So... Now we're back into the history codes, failed this ignition. Let me go into the, to see what is turning on the malfunction indicator light. The only code that is turning on the malfunction indicator light, I know it's hard to see, that's just the secondary air injection code that we had. That's the only one reason that our, our check engine light is on for this car. The other ones have not occurred often enough to actually turn the check engine light on, or they occurred, check engine light came on, they stopped occurring, and the fault code turned the check engine light back off. But again, the car remembers, so they're stored in the history. Okay, This car I know has the, this secondary air injection fault because I removed the secondary air pump. GM had a technical service bulletin for that. You were supposed to also update the software on the ECU, but being in 96, the dealer doesn't do that anymore. So I have removed the secondary air pump per the technical service bulletin, but I just have not updated my ECU, my computer, to say, hey, ignore this fault code. But there we go. If I wanted to clear my codes, again, I go to all powertrain codes right here. See what I've got? 
then I can back out of this and I can go down to clear codes and I'm, I would hit yes to clear codes, ignition on or key on, engine off, are you sure? Now the thing with this is clearing the codes, they're gone, but this also erases all of my freeze frame data to tell me when this fault code occurred. So again, only do this if you really are sure that you don't want to see the, this data anymore, these codes anymore. If I hit no to get out of here, freeze frame failure records, I can touch this, waiting for fault codes right here, and this should show me, if I select engine misfire data, hit yes, this is going to take me to common, common fixes. Oh, look, I'm, I'm not connected to my wireless, so I can't go in and look at that. Again, this is my, my quick fix, okay? But I can look at this, suggestions of, of what, was, what was happening right here. And then again, if I wanted to clear the codes, DTC status, enter a desired trouble code. I'm not going to go into that, but you see I can do different, different things right here, okay? But there's how we check for our fault codes, all right?